On this week's show, the Georgia Southern football team gets one step closer to their season opener September 2nd at Auburn. We'll let you know how things are going with their third scrimmage, all that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagle's Nest. the Eagles Nest. I'm your host Josh Aubrey being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we keep getting closer and closer to the kickoff on September 2nd against Auburn down in Jordan Hale. 3, 2, 1. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host Josh Aubrey being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we keep inching closer and closer to the start of the season, September 2nd, Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University as the Eagles get set to tangle with the Tigers. And we've had a couple of scrimmages and you've both been out at practice. I don't know if the scrimmages are indicative of what we'll see, but since they've held their second one, do you see anything in particular or being at practices that stands out to you that makes you either say, oh no, or oh yeah, this is looking good? Well, I think that the biggest thing to look at uh, right now at this point in the season is just the adjustments, the improvements that are being made. It's hard to look at who's your number one, who's your number two. There's obviously some positions that are a little bit more spoken for with returning starters, but there are plenty of places where there's an empty hole in the depth chart from last year where you've got two or three different guys who are uh, fighting for reps during practice, who will be fighting for reps during the game. So I don't know if you can look at those scrimmages and say for sure who's going to be out there that first play against Auburn. What you can see is from the first scrimmage where maybe the defense gets the better of it aside from a couple big plays. You go to the second scrimmage where the offense a little bit more methodical in sustaining drives and getting a few more big plays. So I like to see that kind of punch and counter punch. It shows you that but on both sides of the ball, there are guys who are learning things, who are handling adversity and coming back and finding ways to beat it. It seems like more of the names we're seeing in the box scores and the scrimmages, at least, aren't exactly the guys who we were counting on seeing in the box scores when the regular season starts. Names like L.A. Ramsby, names like Wesley Fields, Miles Campbell, uh, receivers are, are maybe the second or third, fourth guys that, that we're seeing uh, that we're actually seeing in the box scores that we're thinking, hey, wait, where's this guy? Where's that guy? So do you think they're holding some of these guys back in the scrimmages because they're a little worried about getting, getting them banged up? Well, well, it could be that that's the case, especially for guys who they know uh, from watching film the last couple of years, they know what they can bring to the table on game day. You don't need to go out there and prove it as much in practice, especially when you're going full contact. But also you could chalk it up to no one quite knows what exactly this offense is going to look like. And even if that is what it's going to look like, you practice the plays that you're trying to get better at. Uh, just like you do with the players who are established, maybe you don't need to work on the plays that you think you have downright. So you end up with different guys getting the ball or guys who might touch it a few times a game, getting it a few more times than that in practice. So I really think that it's kind of reading tea leaves if you're going out there to a scrimmage where it's, you know, blue on blue there, and you're trying to figure out what exactly it's going to look like when they line up against Auburn. Well, Mike, one of the positions that we know is still up for grabs is quarterback, and I know that's where a lot of people's focus has been, and I'm sure that's where a lot of the coaches' focuses have been, just to see how things are going. I know Shy Wirtz has seemed like has kind of maybe pulled away a little bit, but just, you know, your thoughts. You've got three other guys out there right now that are competing with him, have they closed the gap at all? Has he done anything, you know, like putting the ball on the ground or something that seems like a bit of a concern as the kickoff to the season gets closer? Well, well I think that uh, putting the ball on the ground definitely was a concern earlier in the uh, in fall camp, and that was a problem for all of the quarterbacks. And it's one of those things you have to get used to, whether or not you're giving or uh, taking that ball back on a – on a, you could call it B-back, running back, however they're going to call it this season. And – having the right pitches, and then it comes to making throws. You know, how crisp are those routes? How good is the timing? I think that you've seen each quarterback maybe put a nose in front in some 
portion of their game. But if you had to call a starter right now, I think that Shy Wirtz would be that starter. I know that uh, head coach Tyson Summers, he doesn't want to lead all the way up till you know the night before the game to na- name a starter. He does want to name one sooner rather than later. As of right now, nothing official, but I think that if you had to put your money on it, it would be shy work. All right, well, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers, a couple of players, about how they feel things have go, been going up until this point. We still have a couple of things here and there, some small things to, from a situational standpoint. we got to finish up some of it on special teams, you know, uh, that we've got to work on really uh, tomorrow and next week to finish up. But we're really looking forward to being able to kind of go through next week and have uh, one or two days to polish some things off, finish up our install, and then, you know, we'll have a mock game just to kind of make sure that we know all the procedures of pregame more than anything else, sideline communication and uh, and those kind of things. And then we'll get into Auburn pretty quick next week, you know. And uh, so we're excited about that. And, yes, they are they are at the point where – uh, they're tired, but they need a little bit of a mental rest. They need a little bit of rest on their bodies. So uh, we're going to be really smart with them tomorrow when we go over to Savannah, and we'll be really smart with them uh, when we bring them back on Monday. The challenge really is, you know, how we're going to adapt when we don't see the similar looks we've been looking at for, you know, three or four weeks. And uh, and I certainly think that's one of the challenges, you know. Uh, offensively, they've seen a, a tremendous amount of four down. They've seen, you know, the same four or five different, you know, option pressures, so to speak, and option coverages. And, uh, and so anyway, it'll be interesting to see. And we've tried to go ahead and start that process really right out the gate where uh, we were already working a three down look, a 50 defense, uh, different looks, whether it's a, a cover two, you know, corner, things like that, that our, nece- our defense doesn't necessarily give you versus the option. Uh, the other side of it being defensively, we got to start working some one back, you know, and we had to do that again right out the gate to kind of install our base defense. And uh, so I think we'll be prepared for that, but I think that we're we're ready to get into a season. We're ready to get into something that's going to give us uh, a little bit more continuity from day to day and week to week with what we've got. But I mean, ultimately, we're just ready to get ready and play Auburn. We'll name a quarterback at some point next week, you know. Uh, but I think that really all four of them have done what we asked them to do. Uh, I still think that all four of them give them give us a chance from a dual threat standpoint of being able to run it. Some of them are a little bit better at some things. They've got a little bit different skill set uh, and talent wise, you know, of some things that they're better at. I think that they've all done a good job uh, of being able to show that they can help us in some way, shape or form. Uh, really excited about what Jalen Frazier is going to wind up being, you know, he's a uh, a true freshman for us right now and seeing how this kind of thing kind of plays out for him. Uh, Cato has come in and really learned the offense, guy that really cares, uh, you know, stays in the film room all the time and is, uh, and is battling his way through it, you know. Uh, LeBaron is, is a guy that we've got to continue to, to, to work with, certainly, and a guy that's, you know, uh, run with a, a good bit with the twos, run some with the ones, and run with the threes some days, you know. So we've got to be able to get some consistency with him. And then I, I think that from an emotional standpoint, I certainly think that you see Shy as uh, not just a leader in the quarterback room, but one of the leaders of our overall offense right now. And that part of it, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about. The anxiousness is, is definitely there. Uh, I feel like a lot of the guys who are just ready to play, uh, we go against those guys every day. And I feel like it, it'll be, it'll feel better to, to hit a different, a different guy with a different color jersey on. Uh, the defense, they kind of picked up on a lot of stuff we did on offense, with my cadence, uh, even some of the plays, you know what I'm saying? So definitely September 2nd, new new team that we um going against, Auburn. Uh, so, you know, we, we all just ready to play. And it's just all about slowing down, you know what I'm saying? Tempo and everything, not trying to move so fast, uh, and just taking the time and read what I'm supposed to read, not feeling ghosts and, and pitching off people I'm not supposed to pitch off. And, and uh, definitely, you know what I'm saying, that's why I made my biggest improvement from the spring to, to now. Is. is being able just to slow the game down in my head and play at my pace and not let the defense uh, dictate the pace that I play at. I think morale is good. Like I said uh, before, um, we're just focused. You know, we got something to prove this year, and we're just taking it one step at a time, and we're just going to keep building, and we're just ready to play Auburn. We've gotten better since winter workouts, from winter workouts to spring ball to uh, summer workouts. During this preseason camp, I think we got better each and every day, and it's honestly been one of the best. Well, Mike, there's plenty of Georgia Southern traditions, uh, and many of them have been it is the Eagle Creek water and things go back to the Eric Russell days, and then some of them have kind of started and then stopped and then picked back up. The baptisms at, at Eagle Creek is something that I think over the last four or five years has really become a, a, a pretty much of a mainstay early in the fall practice. Once again, they're out there in that 
disgusting water, <laughs> dunking uh, themselves underwater. It didn't look quite as disgusting this year. I think that they do a good job of uh, trimming the uh, the weeds back there now that it's become a photo opportunity. Yeah. You got to you gotta keep those guys looking as good as possible. Sometimes it's tougher on some than others. But uh, the, the Eagle seniors, once again, going into beautiful Eagle Creek, Creek wasn't too crowded this year. Only eight seniors on the team and uh, head coach Tyson Summers. Uh, some new athletic staff employees getting in there too. So uh, not as many in there as there will, will be in years to come. But best of luck to those eight seniors moving forward. All right. And as always, Coach Summers, uh, pretty excited about that christening, getting things underway. Well, I think this is what makes Georgia Southern special. You know, we've uh, we certainly got a, a number of, of traditions that we have and we try to upkeep, and this is uh, why it's so special to those kids. You know, uh, I think this is a tremendous opportunity to kind of link the, the old players uh, with the newer guys each year. I think it's a way for them to be bonded together, and, uh, and, and that's what the traditions do, whether it's uh, the yellow school buses, uh, whether it's uh, beautiful Eagle Creek or whatever it may be, those are the things that bond everybody together. And so those guys that started the program with Coach Russell and his staff and, and his first three or four years, and uh, a great example, Tracy Ham here, an assistant you know, athletic director for us, uh, being able to link to all these guys that are now seniors and are finishing up their last year, I think that's what bonds it together, and that's what traditions do. Well, some people are apprehensive of water, period, you know, uh, but Eagle Creek is, uh, they're all looking forward to it. It's more of a joke than anything else uh, with them uh, about who's going to get in versus who's going to dive in. And so uh, you can see Sap. Sap was, uh, he was a little apprehensive about getting in the water, but you got L.A. He was excited about it and wants to make sure he goes head first. So uh, I'm going to stay knee deep as best as I can for, uh, for as many years as I can here doing it. That group of guys is as good as I've ever been around. They've done a tremendous job of leading uh, this entire offseason and camp. A uh, great group of people, and uh, we're really excited about what they're going to be able to do on the football field this year. Hey, Miss Thompson, everything's fine. It's going to be no problem. I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Paisley Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. And the preseason festivities continue. Friday, Georgia Southern heading down to Armstrong to kind of give the Savannah area a chance to come out to practice. That's going on Friday evening, right? Friday evening. All right, well, before we go, speaking of Friday, the Georgia Southern uh, women's soccer team gets things underway at home against Florida Gulf Coast Friday, and then they'll be playing Sunday as well. Going in, a tie and a loss, is that? A couple of exhibition games, they, they notched a tie against Jacksonville, put a couple in the back of the net. Against Georgia, not as much luck, a 2 nothing loss there. But overall, this is a team that's a little more veteran than last year. A tough schedule ahead, but we'll see if they can do a little bit better than last season in the Sun Belt. All right, well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us and hope to see you again next week.